This is Cashmere Brown. And this is Fresh. Fresh. This is B Tree Rogers. B Tree. Icon yeah, Band is us three together. It's FTR friends, FTR, that rap. friends that rap. Why don't y'all introduce yourselves? Go ahead. I go by the name Fresh, man. Forever real, easily staying humble. The name is deeper than the illest verses that I'm on. Get at me, man. Mm -hmm. I'm B Tree. And B basically stands for be yourself, which is on um, being tree, so on being me. Fuck you, mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh. Let's go on and get this started. Like I said, last episode, if I apologize too much, okay, oh well, and we're going to go on with it, and I'm not even going to get into it. All right, let's start this off. Let's start this shit off. Off. Okay. I want to say one thing. Talk, tell me what y'all think about the whole Mike Brown situation. Tell me. <sighs> you know me. You know me. I ain't no racist. We gotta, we gotta stand up to the white man. Black people stand up to white people. Look a white man in the eyes when you're talking to him. Don't be afraid. You were once kings and pharaohs. Know your right. Stop killing each other. Stop the violence and just get educated so we can take our rightful place back on this planet. That's all I'm saying. Ah. You ain't gonna get into it no more. Cause I, I feel like you not. It feel like you. I don't, I don't, my, I ain't you? no racist like I said, but just mine. <laughs> you know what you gotta do, black people. Okay. Go ahead, go on. What you think, Tree? What you think? Uh, I feel like, man, it was it was wrong, you know what I'm saying? The, the guy, you know, unfortunately that he got killed, you know what I'm saying? But we don't know the story. We just know it's a black guy got killed by a white man. So it's a racism. It looked racism, but we don't know what, what was behind the story. You know what I'm saying? But from what I heard, though, it's, it seemed kind of fucked up. Because, you know, I got pulled over today by an uh, uncover cop. You know what I'm saying? He just pulled me over. He asked me, uh... And did I have my seatbelt on? And the motherfucker clicked on. So I'm like, I got this, I got this motherfucker on. I'm like, bro, like, what, what are you doing? I would tell my brother, bro, I'm not trying to get killed by no policeman, man, you know. But, uh, see? See? With, with that Mike, with that Mike Brown shit, Mike Brown and Trayvon Martin and everybody else who got killed by policemen, white policemen, my heart go out to them and their family, but. Man, shit. we should not be afraid when we see a cop. We should feel like we're gonna be saved. Hell That's yeah! I'm I, is it wrong to feel that way? You think like, cause of what we, us as black people, what we've been going through for, like for so long? Do you think it's wrong for black people to feel such a way about police? Uh, I just feel like people think we complain as a race all the time. Sometimes we bring it upon ourselves to with the way we act. We don't complain, man. We just tell the truth. If you don't want to hear the truth, then shut the fuck up. Don't comment, cause this is the truth. We still getting disrespected to this day. Right. Like, if you if you got anything bad to say about black people, don't even fucking say nothing on this shit, bro. Yeah. Like, like I said, bro. We know what the fuck we talking about, nigga. You ain't a black person, you don't know what the fuck we coming from. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Just like, we, we see you, nigga, whatever the fuck your name is, that they made family guy and shit. You nigga. racist motherfucker. Yeah, now nah, he racist as fuck. That's why, that's why the Cleveland show didn't survive, and that shit funnier than family guy. Yeah, it is true. American okay. Dad is also funny. Family Guy sucks dick. Yeah, fool. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, you, you with that racism and that shit, nigga, fuck you. Nigga. Okay. Fuck racism. We not racist, we just saying fuck racism. Yeah. So y'all still think racism going on? Racism yeah, is going racism on. would never die. I'm finna tell you how racism going on. You know, when we, when we when y'all was, when you lived in your old neighborhood, man, the motherfucker the woman started walking across the goddamn street. What the fuck you scared of us for? Cause we black. <laughs> the fuck? That Stereo is true. Stereotypical. That is true. But, hey, we not racist. We just tell the truth. You can't comment and say we complain too much if you don't if you don't know where, where we're coming from. If you're not inside our skin, you don't know. I'm sorry. You just don't know. We don't complain, man. This is just how the game goes. Okay. I feel you. Honestly. Oh, yeah, he's not Mexican, by the way. He's yeah, I'm, I'm African-American. Well, actually, I'm American. Because if I'm an African-American, you are European-American. So, I'm an American. Yeah, I'm American, too. Okay. We all are. Okay. We all are Americans. Don't call me African-American. So, okay. Now we got it on it and how y'all feel about racism and everything. So, how do y'all feel about the whole Robin Williams situation? Because I feel pretty bad about it. Yeah, I'm sad. Yeah, I am, too. I am. Cause that's one of them actors. As you was a kid, you kind of grew up with him. Yeah, I love Flubber, man. And, and, yeah, you know. So he defined the whole generation. He defined a generation. 
from being a he was a comedic genius. Yeah. yeah. I, I heard he was depressed though. That's why he, Yeah, depression, he, depression. They said they said it uh, might be a case of suicide, so you you can be the funniest man in the world and still be the, the saddest person in the world at the same time. Yeah. I you know, some days like another comedian, like Cat Williams, I ain't gonna lie, he's funny as fuck, but I feel as though like he can be really sad at sometimes because I feel like Day, whoever Day is, was were really getting at him because he was in he was going to jail so many times, but he was never in court or some shit like that. Then they end up, I think they took his kids away from him and shit like that. So wherever I don't know, I think it's just something with these celebrities and yeah, it's it's a lot it's a lot more going on. But Robin Williams was one of my favorite actors, so. Yeah. It wasn't just his comedic roles that brought me, you know, it was his dramatic roles too, like Good Will Hunting, mm -hmm. which won him an Oscar, if you did not know, for Best Supporting Actor. I know my stuff. Oh, yeah, he, do he does know his stuff. So, okay, since we talked about, we talked about the racism with the Mike Brown situation, then we talked about Robin Williams. Let's get off into some music. As you know, I got paid vacation coming up. It's coming soon, I'm working on it. I got these two. You got Fresh and B-Tree that I'm working with, with that, with features on it. And tell them about what y'all got coming out, what y'all got. Well, you know, I'm coming out with my mixtape, my first solo mixtape, Concrete Jungle. It's all about the different aspects of Memphis, because we are from Memphis, as you did not know. And I feel like it's a struggle to survive out here, so therefore it's a Concrete Jungle. Kind of took the name from New York. But right. hey, if it's things that, that like this happening, you know, you just got to take a name for it and make a story behind it. And that's why I'm trying to tell a story. You'll hear a lot from me. You will never not see my face. I'm always going to come for you. You know, I'm on the ride, so fresh. True. All right. Um, what I got coming up is the Dendrology Project, uh, Volume 1, which is uh, Dendrology means that it's a study of tree. It's a study of a goddamn tree, so. <laughs> you're going to be, you're going to, you're going to, this mixtape that I'm coming with, this is my solo mixtape, and what it's going to do is going to take you inside my head and you're gonna be it's gonna allow you to study the ways and how a tree act and you know what I'm saying, how how it, you know, learns and how it, you know what I'm saying, would tear your ass up with the branches and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you you gonna you gonna you gonna you gonna see a lot of you gonna know what dendrology mean after this mixtape once you hear it. So Cool, cool. Yeah, so, so we got Dendrology Project, we also got Concrete Jungle, mm -hmm. then you got myself. Hey, vacation. So make sure this is Friends That Rap. So make sure you check us out on Instagram, Friends That Rap. Friends That Rap. And hit the link in the bio. Got some music. We're going to upload some more music on there. Hit the link in the bio. Link in the bio. Link in the bio. Friends That Rap. FTR. Friends That Rap. Yep. I remember this. Yeah. So I got another question. And I'm going to just be real about it. Do you feel like, as unsigned artists as we are now, do you feel like as though the music is music really hot in the streets or do DJs and promoters play music so much to us as listeners so much that makes it hot in the streets? No, I, I mean, like with music, uh, I feel like music now is more trendy than every, anything. Like if you come out with some catchy, like girl shake that ass backwards, like this song is going to be like number one on the chart for weeks until the next trendy, you know what I'm saying, song come out, but it's just... All it is is about uh, money and stuff like that. It's not about, you know, heart and soul and passion no more because, you know, the world is changing and the rap game changing a lot. So I think it's just about trends and shit now. Yeah, I feel like um, I feel like it's a popularity contest in the rap game now. Uh -huh. Because the best rappers, some of the best rappers are not even relevant anymore. Right. It's all about that one catchy single that's going to last you, what, six months, probably less than that. Yeah. I feel like the best music comes out in the fall and winter because the summertime is all about that one dance song or one, one catchy swag song that's going to get you in the door, but you're not going to last in the door. So I feel like it's a popularity contest. The rap game is dwindling. Because that's kind of what happened with Trinidad James. He had that one song, and he ran with it for almost a year. And he's dropped from Dev Jam. He's not even signed to Dev Jam anymore. Now he's talking about he's broke. He can't even pay for beats. And he was talking about he can't pay for verses. So I guess he had people writing his shit. So I guess being a one hit wonder nowadays is not really where it's at because these labels is going to drop you fast. Like, yeah. fast as fuck. And with 
that's another thing too about you know what I'm saying. Let's go back to the the race race thing. Go pull out the race card again. You know what I'm saying. You gotta fuck. You gotta you know black people, man. We we all just. So that's one thing. We're so yeah, divided. Yeah, that's that's one thing I hate. You know what I'm saying. Just care about money, cars, gold, and shit like that. Fuck that. You know what I'm saying? We need the like when you got that much money like that, cause you will never know what happened. You know what I'm saying? Like turning dad James, just like you know he got the money now he broke. Like bro, you was a fucking you had millions, bro. Like off that one hit. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like bro, like that that was the shit for a while. You know what I'm saying? So how the fuck you go broke? You know what I'm saying? Just spending your money on stupid shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like instead of investing that money into a business or some shit like that, like. Black people just need to learn how to think, but man, that's why I'm trying to be successful. I can give a fuck about all this shit, you know what I'm saying? About all the fame and you know, I do care about the fortune because I want to build a foundation or whatever. But fuck all that fame shit, you know what I'm saying? Because that shit will bring you down too. So right, I just want to be successful, I guess. So, cause Trinidad James, honestly, he had after he got signed with Dev Jam, he made a label. I think it was called the Gold Game or some shit like that. Obviously, Gold, you know. And I don't think he signed nobody. He wasn't trying to do anything with his label. Because usually artists that come out now, how they capitalize, they make a label. And then they sign some other people. And them other people start popping out too. So you still got some revenue still coming in. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. But he didn't capitalize on nothing. I feel like as though he just made a song and he just went with it. Because I heard some other shit. But I was like, damn, this shit... It sucks, because I was like, that's all he got. Like, damn. And he had that song with August Alcina, but at the same time, that's not his song. That's August Alcina's song. And I don't think he really helped him as much. I, to me, he really didn't even need it. Like, he really didn't need a feature, like, honestly. Because some of these artists, they ask. That's why I don't understand. Here go another question. Do you think most of these artists nowadays, do you think they need the feature you know, to help them out? Do you think they can do songs on their own? Like, Yeah, some people can. You know, it's just a label formulate things like that to a bud, for more buzz. You know, you would want to see a, not to say it's going to happen, but you would want to see a Nicki Minaj future and uh, Iggy Azalea. You would want to see that. Yeah. You know, so it's just, it's all about more money with the features. They Some some artists don't ask for features. It's just the label recommends it. Right, right. That's what I think. Okay, I agree with that. Okay, so getting off of that, what does it take, us being unsigned artists, we, we slowly making it, what does it take, and also what advice would you give another unsigned artist trying to make it, what, would, what does it take to make it, and what advice would you give, like, pretty much, like. Man, these days, it don't seem like it's all about hard work and dedication no more. It's right. all about that one catchy song, it's, it's all a cash cow, man, it's ca I, don't, I don't see the hard work, I see it from some artists. But it's hard for me because I work damn hard, and I'm not just going to put anything out there because I want to be relevant in the rap game for years to come. Right. My idols are like Nas or 50 Cent, Kent Lamar, you know, people that are, are great MCs, not people that just are one-hit wonders. So if you don't have to work hard, I don't think you deserve it. But I say everybody should just work hard, keep your head up, make positive, good music. Just because you don't cuss, sell drugs, or talk about guns in your songs does not mean you're not a rapper. Preach. So don't ever say another person is not a rapper because they don't talk about those names. They just are versatile. Yeah. Nah, they mind. Okay. What you think? Versatile. Versatile. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? They don't make you a pop rapper. Pop, pop rapper neither. There's no such thing as a, a fuck, pop rapper. There's a fucking pop rapper. Ain't no such thing as a damn pop rapper, man. But, you know what I'm saying? Like Fritz said, you know what I'm saying? You got to work hard. You got to put in, put in hard work. You know what I'm saying? If you, if you really want to, you know, be relevant from year, for years to come because... You know what I'm saying? Like like that bullshit that's coming out now and all that shit. Like I only see them niggas lasting for like two years, three years, but I ain't gonna call no names up. They know who they are because they made it so fast, but Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, you make it so fast, you crash fast, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause like Kevin Hart said, you know what I'm saying, if this shit was easy, I wouldn't wanna do it. You know what, yeah. what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying, like like I would tell these niggas, man, I'm finna get up give up on this shit, you know what I'm saying? Cause man, this shit's so fucking hard, but like yeah. You know what I'm saying? If it was easy, I wouldn't want to do it. So what the fuck I'm going to give up for? You know what I'm saying? It's easy for yeah. some people. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know what I'm saying? I can make a rap right now in like two minutes. You know what I'm saying? And that shit would be a one-hit wonder. But do I want to do that? Hell no. 
fuck this shit, man. I want to be, I want to build a f- fucking foundation. So I just, you know what I'm saying, uh, my advice to the other unsigned artists is keep working hard. You know what I'm saying? Make sure your your shit makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Just don't Tell a story. It. Tell a story. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? If, you know what I'm saying? Go out there. I mean, some of your shit can be kind of catchy, but you know what I'm saying? That's called selling out. But I mean, everybody sell out. So, I mean, do your shit, though. I mean, we not... I, we are not saying we are the best artists or the cockiest artists or the most uh, influential artists. Some, a lot of people don't even know us, but we are coming slowly and fast. Slowly, not fast, but the pace is coming. We don't have to rush anything, but just know we can rap. We don't look like the so typical rappers, but we can rap. Right. I can, I can give you money, cars, clothes, hoes, and a lot more shit. So just know that. Right. So now that we're winding down, I'm going to ask one more question. Just... Just give me your honest answer how you feel about this. And, you know, we trying to relate to most of these unsigned artists because we unsigned artists and yeah. stuff, shit like that. Do you think, honestly, like all these so-called a and so-called promoters and DJs and all these people, they ask for so much money from the unsigned artists, not knowing what we going through, you know, bills and other things like Babies. that. Babies. Yeah. Do you think... Honestly, honestly, do you think it take all that money to make it? Because I'm going to just say this one thing. Because it's, it's a lot of artists. It's a lot of artists. Not, not every artist is lying, but then not every artist is telling the truth. But I'm just saying, it's a lot of artists that saying, man, I came from nothing. Like, really, like, they got kicked out of their house, didn't know where to go, like, sleeping outside, and all they had, no money, no food, and they all they had was just an opportunity that just came up and bam. They got signed and was able to get the money. But nowadays, I feel as though all these industry heads coming in, these unsigned artists with all this money. Do y'all honestly think it takes over like so much money to make it? Or does it actually take just an opportunity or a chance to make it? Uh, nah, I don't think it takes a lot of money because, you know what? Because if them people can, you know what I'm saying, have the same opportunity, we can have the same opportunity too. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. you know, God just ordered our footsteps. You know what I'm saying? Like, we just, we just don't know when our time going to be or when we, we might make it five years from now. We'll never know. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. we might make it off of goddamn sitting on the corner and we just bust out, start freestyling. Some boys and man type shit. Yeah. yeah. And somebody might just run into us, you know what I'm saying? But they don't mean stop, you know, stop trying to go places and pay. You know what I'm saying? Because we will never know, you know what I'm saying? Because somebody can just come up. Yeah, one day. I feel like yeah. I feel like back in the day you can have a good record, you know, a good CD. You you can go somewhere and give it to somebody, you know. You can make it. You can make it. They'll like what they hear. These days, people like what you hear, but if you don't have no fan base behind you, behind you, and if they don't see a quick buck they can make off you, you are not gonna get the opportunity. Cause it's a, it's like uh, it's let's just say it's a, it's a million rappers in the world. Let's just say right. I'm pretty sure they're going to choose the people who, ha- who, who can bring in the most revenue. They don't care if you're the best rapper. They want to see who is the most relevant right now so they can get a, a quick buck. Mm-hmm. They don't care if you last long in the industry. They don't care nothing about you. They just want a quick buck off your brand. Mm-hmm. They're not going to help build your brand. They're going to take your brand and, and then drain it mm-hmm. for their own well-being. Right. The real rappers or people that can rap, they work hard and try to get where they're at. But it, it, if you don't have a fan base, if you don't, um, if you don't have a fan base, that's what I'm saying. If you don't have people following you, they don't give a fuck if you can rap. Well, okay, they don't give a true. fuck if you're the next fucking Nas. If you don't have something to offer them, they don't give a fuck. They don't care about your dreams. That's what I'm saying. And that's why it's called entrepreneurship, ladies. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but you know, just start your own shit. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's why I just wanted to get it. See where y'all came from for that, cause I actually, I agree with you on it, hundred percent. I just wanted to know, because I was thinking about that the other day, cause I was like, it's no way in the world, cause I, we go up to all these industry heads and they hit us with like prices over like a thousand, and I'm looking at these people that's getting signed and they telling their story. I'm listening to their music. And I'm thinking to myself, it's no way, it's no way. This nigga said he got this type of money, but it, it just didn't make sense to me. I had to clear that up because that shit just didn't make yeah. sense. Because like I said, not every artist is lying, but then not every artist is telling the truth. So I know it's going to take a little bit of money, but damn, like a nigga, 
Damn near gotta give you his arm and the leg. Why would ever have to a dollar in a dream, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah nah. Na- nowadays, it's like $10,000 and like, just fuck your $10, dream. $10,000 and like, nigga, I just care about the money. Fuck a dream. Yeah, That's fuck true. a dream. Yo. Can I say one more thing? It's food for thought right here. Tell food him. Go on here. Hip hop was boy. Hip hop boycotted the Grammys because they did not want to televise the hip hop award par- um, parts. Think about that. They did not want to televise it. This day and age, there is no such thing as a best female rap artist anymore, Grammy. If you want to win a Grammy, bring storytelling back to hip-hop because it will no longer be relevant at the Grammy soon. Bring storytelling back to hip-hop or you will never win a Grammy for hip-hop. Food for thought. And you know what? On that note, I'm Cashmere Brown. And I'm B-Tree. And I'm Fresh. And this is episode three of Paid Vacation. And we are out. FTR, nigga. You old flexing ass, nigga. Cash.